Hey guys, I'm Voilin and today's video I quickly want to talk about the GD extension called Gozen, which I use for video playback and for rendering now. Since version 2 of the GD extension, you are able to render out videos with it. Now, a lot of people probably only want the GD extension for video playback, so I will be separating those two into separate GD extension files, like compiled versions, but they will be in the same repo. So let's take a quick look at the repo, which I gave a little bit of a makeover. So yeah, let's go over it. So this is the repo. At this moment, the status for Linux is green. Status for Windows, also green. Mac OS, I have not been able to test Mac OS. I don't have a Mac. I also don't even have Windows, but uh, people on the Discord server were able to confirm that uh, Windows version actually works. So yeah, Mac OS, if somebody has Mac OS and they want to have video playback working, Try to make it work, like the biggest problem will probably be trying to compile FFmpeg correctly and linking everything, but should be pretty straightforward. Or if somebody wants me to do it for them, donate enough so I can buy some kind of like MacBook, which will probably not happen. So we have something new, something that we did not really have for version 1 and the versions before. We actually have a readme now for compiling and also a Way, like a document to show how to actually use the GD extension. And then also a roadmap for version 3. Because at this moment we are lacking a little bit of a feature right now and on the rendering side of things. Like the video playback is completely working. It works quite smoothly. So we can take any video file by example in this test project, drag it in and it will have smooth playback together with actual like the, with the audio being lined up. Variable frame rate videos are not really working and interlaced videos should have some kind of support but not um, proper support like as you can see there's a lot of like zigzagging going on so the moment that it goes to interlaced videos there's a slight problem may get fixed in version 3 or in a later version but yeah rendering audio that's for version number 3 but for the rest everything works except for variable frame rate and interlaced video. And the biggest priority of this whole GD extension is not to provide uh, video playback for everybody, although it is one of the main goals. The biggest priority is to make it work with Gozen or video editor that we are making inside of Godot. And for the licensing, if you want to use this, be careful with the licensing. So you will need um, LGPL, I think. Just take in mind all the licensing stuff. So if you, come to, uh, if you go to compile info, and uh, compiling GD and uh, GDE goes in. So compiling this GD extension can be done in two different ways. So I made a build script in Python and I also, well, you can also just um, compile it through scons. When you use the Python file build.py, it's very straightforward, just follow the instructions. It will ask you what you want and such. So yeah, the only thing that's a little bit complicated, maybe like not very well documented is the, um, use system argument, which is basically, do you want to use the systems installed FFmpeg or do you want to compile FFmpeg and export it together with your application? So that's the only thing. And for the command line version, it's very straightforward and basically the same way as how you would compile um, Godot. So minus J directly followed by the amount of cores and threads that you want to use for compiling. The target, is it for debug or for release? For platform, Linux or Windows, at this moment, macOS is not really supported yet. So yeah, Android may work, may not work, who knows. And then architecture, for most people, that's probably not going to be that much of a problem. It's mainly 64, so x86 underscore 64. If you want to render for different systems like ARM-based systems, then you will need to use the ARMs, um, arms and legs, and the ARM64 or uh, 32. And then there's also RV64 for so, um, some Linux systems. And then of course, uh, use system arguments. If you want to compile FFmpeg with the GD extension, then you should set it to uh, yet yeah, no. And if you want the GD extension to use the installed versions, use yes. Note that this application is made with FFmpeg version six. On certain distributions, they don't have um, FMPAC 6.x. So yeah, that's something to take in mind. At this moment, there's already FFMPAC 7. So that some distros don't really have access to the 6 yet, to the 6 and higher versions. Kind of a mystery to me. So 
Compiling, very straightforward. I will try to make the whole GitHub uh, stuff working. So um, the GitHub CI, that's, that compiles everything, but that's for later. And then we have how to use the GD extension. So if you have used any type of GD extension before, you know that you will need a .gd extension file. This is basically all you need. It's just change the paths and good to go. And then we have the video playback and the renderer. So like a little bit of caution for the renderer. The renderer is incomplete as we still need audio working. That's something I mentioned already, but we don't have a way to export audio yet, nor do we have a way to export subtitles. The video playback is something that was already existing in version one. Basically you open a video by giving the file path. Something new is that you have to add a bool value in case you want to have audio exported as well. Well, imported as well or not. This is by default, yes. The reason why this value exists is because of the video editor. Because we don't need to extract the audio from um, the video file every single time because we open the video file multiple times for each and every clip. Which is probably not the best way to handle things, but it works for now. And after you finish using a video, use the close video option because else memory is just being taken up. So close the video or just free the class object and you're good to go. So by the way, you need to have a variable of the type video and that's how you get access to everything. Note that this is not a drag and drop um, kind of thing and that you get a note that gives perfect playback. You need to do some of the coding yourself to actually provide the feedback, like the actual uh, playback. For that, you can use the test room that has, um, well, like I showed you, a working version. So yeah, opening a video, closing a video, and checking a video file to see if it's actually open. You should do this every now and then just to know if the video is still open. If you try to get the next frame or seek a frame whilst the video is closed, your application will crash and that's just an FF impact thing. Then we have seeking a frame. So seeking a frame puts the playhead inside of that video file to that exact frame. And then you can just use next frame to give you the next image. These two functions will return an image, an, uh, well, an image class object. The reason why you should not use seek frame for every single frame is because every single time when you seek, it goes through the entire video file to find that specific frame compared to next frame will just give you the next one. So something to take in mind performance wise, try to use next frame as much as possible. If the next frame is like 20, 30 frames later compared to where you are, right now in the video, use next frame just 30 times. That's still faster compared to using seek frame. And getting audio when you open the, audio, uh, the video file, the audio will be saved inside of the video class as a audio stream WAF object. So easy access, just use get audio to get access to that audio. Um, getting the frame rate is important because you actually need to handle the whole like displaying all the frames correctly. So you need to know at what time a certain frames will be displayed. So get frame rate, a little bit of code just to make it easier for people to figure out how to do the whole frame stuff. And then checking if the frame rate is variable because if the frame rate is variable, you won't have smooth playback. And I think right now I even have a function saying that if the variable, uh, if the frame rate is variable, we don't even approve the video from being played because right now we don't have a proper implementation inside of the open video one uh, file to, well, in the video class file to actually handle frame seeking correctly for those type of videos. And then getting the total length of the video, which will basically like get total frame number, will give you the amount of frames that the video file has in total, which is important to know because again, you need to handle the playback of the video yourself. Ah, a lot of talking. Okay, ready to go again. So next up, since version two, we have the renderer. This is working and it is working quite well, if I say so myself. So first of all, the codecs, they all have an enum value that you can pass to the set uh, video codec function and set audio codec function. At this moment, we support codecs MP3, AAC, Opus, Forbus, FLAC, PC, uh, PCM Uncompressed, AC3, EAC3, WAF and MP2. Some of them have not been properly tested yet, but normally they should work fine because FFmpeg is the one, well, the one is the system that handles everything. And also the enum values, 
Um, we start with capital A underscore for audio, capital V underscore for video codecs, and capital S underscore for subtitle codecs. At this moment, there is no subtitle support yet to like add to the video files, uh, like add a subtitle stream. That is not an option yet. That will not come in version three, hopefully in version four. And the list of video files, it's quite a long one. So we have H264, we have um, H-EVC, which is basically H265. Um, you should probably mainly only use like H264. If your hardware is capable of it, you can use uh, VP9. Then you have M uh, MPEG-4, which is a good codec, but then you have MP uh, MPEG-2 and MPEG-1. Avoid these, the quality is terrible. And then we have AV1 again, you really need hardware and coding for that. Same for VP8. Then you have AMV, not anime music video. It's a, an actual code I called AMV. Then we have the GoPro Cineform, Cinepack, Derek, um, FLV1, GIF, for people who want that. Then the older eight standards, um, H261, H263, 263P. Teora, which is the video file that Kodo supports by default. Um, WebP. DNxHD, MJPEG, um, ProRes, RAW Video, and UF4. So a lot of video files. Again, not all of these have been tested, but normally FFmpeg should handle them just fine. So they should work out of the box. And then for subtitles, uh, subtitle codecs, we have AS. <laughs> I thought I would be able to say it with a straight face. Um, Moth text, subrip text, TTML, WebVTT, and XAP. And then we have the setters and getters. And these are important. You need to set everything first before opening the renderer so it can start accepting frames and data. A quick thing that you can do is to get like a whole dictionary of all the codecs, if they are supported or not, and if they have hardware, ac uh, hardware acceleration or not. Get supported codecs. This is important to run. For a video editor. Normally the main ones that you will be using like AAC audio, AAC audio? Yeah, AAC audio and A264 for the video codec. Normally these should be supported on every system. They don't always have hardware encoding so yeah. By the way this um, function only shows the encoder support for hardware acceleration. I am thinking of making uh, the same function inside of the video class. That's um, well, basically gives a list of all the hardware acceleration decoders. Not that it won't matter that much, but it may be helpful for some people. And then is video codec supported? Just a quick way to check if it's supported on the system or not. Same for audio. And get video file meta. This is just a function that I personally use for checking if the rendered video file is actually a proper video file or not. You don't need this. And this is probably something that I will change towards uh, to the video class because I think it will make more sense to have it in that class, but that's for version three. Then we have the set get output file. You need to set the path of where you want the video to save. You can do that with set output file path and then file paths. This is a string. Then we have setting the video codec, setting the audio codec. You can have the um, just change set with get and we will have that information. But for audio rendering, we don't always want to render with audio. That's sometimes an option. So you need to set render audio to true or false. And then setting the resolution by default is normally 1080p. And for that, you need to use a vector 2i. Then the frame rare and the frame rate. Uh, I should remember myself to fix this. And by default, it's set to 30, but this is a float because some frame rates are like 29.74 or something. So. Yeah, I made it into a float and then uh, setting the bitrate. For this, you need to be certain, like um, 500 uh, kilobits by example. You need to basically do this times thousands, else your quality will look very strange and you probably won't realize why. So everything times thousands. And then the gob size, which is basically group of pictures. This helps for frame seeking. So the lower the amounts, the better frame seeking will be and the faster it will be. The higher the group of pictures is, the slower it will be for frame seeking, but the more about the less size that the video file will be taken. Um, yeah, that's basically what my understanding of it is. I leave it at 10 because that's what they recommend. And then before opening the video file, do a ready check. Can you actually render, like is the renderer ready? By the way, this is all inside of a class called, um, what is it, um, renderer. So. 
yeah, be so that you use the correct class. And, and then to actually start putting all the data inside of the video file, use the open function and then just send frame. We don't have a way yet to set like on which uh, frame number each frame should be. So you just have to add them in order. So there's not really any like um, multi rendering that you can do of like adding multiple frames at once in different locations. That's not possible right now. And audio isn't working yet, but you would do that by send audio and then send the entire audio stream uh, WAV file, by example, uh, well, object. And that function should normally like add the audio correctly to the video file, but you should do that after sending all the frames just so you don't run into performance bottlenecks. And then when all the data has been submitted, use close and you have your video file. And just a quick note, if you use the GD extension, be certain that you add all the files with your Godot project, because if you render, um, if you compile with FFmpeg um, like included, that, that you also get the FFmpeg library files, when exporting your project, the DD extension file will be inside, uh, well, next to the exported project, but not the FFmpeg files. So for everything to work, also copy over the FFmpeg files. That's basically all. That's GD goes in to have video playback and to render videos inside of Godot. This was a very short video. I just wanted to give this information very quickly so people are actually up to date on how to use it. And to know, to, well, to let you guys know that's actually usable right now. I'm using it inside of Gozen Lite right now. And I've been using it for this, um, a personal project because I have my first video rendered with this uh, GD extension with Gozen Lite, which is the video that you're seeing right now. Of course, I had to take the video of showing off my supporters who have been supporting me on Kofi. They helped me out a lot. And one of the reasons why I made um, a separate project of generating this file is because recently I've been getting a lot of new donations and new pe a lot of new people supporting me. So I wanted to have a quicker way of generating this um, video of my Kofi supporters. So yeah, thank you very much for supporting me. If you want to support me, go to my Kofi link in the description. If you want to use this CD extension, please go to the link inside of the description. If you use this, um, GD extension for anything in an actual finished project or in a project that's already available for people. Let me know, I can add it to the readme file so people can more easily find your project so they can see of what um, this GD extension is capable of. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, more updates on Ghost and Light are coming soon because we are getting very close. We can actually render videos now without audio, but we can render videos already inside of a video editor made in Godot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.